For the past couple weeks, I've been testing different side hustles that I've seen go viral on TikTok recently. A lot of these videos claim that you can make like $100 an hour by just completing surveys. Most of them just seem like affiliate marketing schemes, but I took the top five that I thought had the most potential. I've been trying them out. And in this video, we're gonna go through all of them and I'm gonna give them a trash or a pass. The most underrated side hustle that will make you question a nine to five. Okay, so basically this girl is claiming that you can make $250 an hour by doing copywriting for Amazon listings, which isn't totally insane. Copywriting is a very valuable skill and there are a bunch of people out there that are making a whole bunch of money doing it. But I think the problem with her video is when she says stuff like, And trust me, you don't need any experience. It didn't take me long after signing up for Upwork to realize that nobody's gonna hire me if I don't have any experience. The first thing you do when you sign up on the platform is you fill out a resume and your past work experience. And on top of that, there's hundreds of other freelancers on here from like India and the Philippines that are willing to do the same job for six to $7 an hour. So to build yourself up to the point where you're charging a hundred plus dollars an hour on Upwork, you need to first do a whole bunch of work for like very little money just to get the reviews and the credibility. And two, you need to actually know what you're doing, which usually means failing a bunch of times, making mistakes, testing out different strategies to see what works. And that's definitely not something that you wanna do if someone's paying you $250 an hour. So instead of wasting my time with that, I think I'm gonna try and get some jobs in something I actually know how to do, which is photo editing and video editing. I think if I can link this YouTube channel and then show some of my previous video experience, then there should be a pretty good chance that someone hires me. So I applied for a bunch of different editing jobs that I could find and I noticed the same thing. Most editors on Upwork are charging incredibly cheap and the job offerings have insane expectations like a 10 minute video for $15. But I figured if I can close a couple of these smaller jobs and get some good reviews, then maybe I can gain some trust on the platform and land some bigger jobs later on. So I just applied to as many as I could until I ran out of credits. Most of my offers just got ignored, but eventually I did get accepted to edit a comedy podcast compilation of Chris D'Elia, which was pretty easy because I listen to his podcast anyway, and this is pretty much how it turned out. Hello, Chris and Matt, big fan, <laughs> massive. Chris, oh shit. I got this app that goes off every, every time someone's too boring. <laughs> <laughs> so after about three weeks of trying Upwork, the only job that I ended up closing was that compilation video, which was for $20. After the cut that Upwork takes, it left me with $15.48. I'm just trying to bow to my breath. So yeah, this platform is definitely pretty hard to get started with and to gain credibility on. But I think the good part is, is that there's new jobs popping up all the time. And a lot of the people that are hiring freelancers on sites like Upwork, they're looking for long-term opportunities. So I bet if you just spent enough time applying to a bunch of different jobs, trying to find ways that you can stick out, show them some of your best work, uh, I think you're going to find a pretty decent gig sooner or later. Now, I wouldn't waste my time trying to go for Amazon copywriting if you don't have any experience with that. But if you do have something that you can market like I do with photo editing, video editing, uh, I would give it a shot. So this side hustle gets a pass. Can you read in English? Yeah. Can you read aloud? Yes. You potentially want to make $400 for 30 minutes worth of work? I do. I got you. All right, so basically homie over here is saying that by becoming a narrator for Audible, you can make a whole bunch of money. So I signed up on acx.com. The process is pretty straightforward and they give you a whole bunch of books that you can audition for. Awaken your love life, the six keys to your intimacy, the lazy guide to better habits, 30 days of daily positive affirmations to attract success, gratitude, confidence, and happiness. And you become more confident in your self image as a result. You grew more confident in your ability to take criticism and reflect. You became more self-sufficient and reliable. Good for you. You did it. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a reason that only so many books become great books. This book right here is called In the Toilet, No Paper. That sounds like a Jay-Z line. In the toilet, no paper. At this point, I've probably spent like five to six hours auditioning and then editing the auditions after because there's so many mistakes that I have to cut out. But almost any, but almost any live organism can be gen. But almost any live or, but almost any, but, al but almost any live organism can be gen genetically mauled. Can be, but almost any, but almost any live organism can be genetic. Can, can can. I don't really think I have a good reading voice, so we'll see if anybody listens to my auditions and like thinks that I do. So I'm gonna send all these auditions in and then wait a couple weeks and let's see what happens. All right, let's see if we've been hired to do any narrating jobs. So acx.com. So after almost a month, I've been denied by three books and I still have seven pending auditions. I don't know how long you're supposed to wait for an audition to be accepted or denied, but damn, that kind of sucks. I, I really thought that this side also had a lot of potential. It would be pretty sick if you could just read and make money. 
But yeah, if you have to spend like six hours just for someone to not even listen to your audition, I don't know if this one is worth it. I would be interested in trying a little bit more, but for now, this side hustle is trash. All right, next side hustle I'm trying is from this guy. He says you can make $36 an hour by just play testing games, which sounds pretty good. Sounds a little bit too good to be true. So I went to this website and I signed up to be a play tester. They actually make you sign an NDA, so I can't show any of the game that I'm playing. But basically what you do is you download the game and you put headphones in and you talk while you're playing the game and you just go through your thought process and how you feel about the game. And after that, I guess the recording is gonna be sent off to somebody that works for the play test company and they're gonna watch it and review how good of a reviewer I am I guess and then once I qualify then I can actually start playing games so I'm not getting paid for this easy nice so after sending in my application, I got accepted to be a game tester the very next day. So after that, I was expecting to be able to just start playing games and get paid right away. The actual way that it works is they send you an email like once a week, once every two weeks, and you have to fill out a survey, like a questionnaire that asks you what games you're playing right now. And then I guess based on those survey answers, they decide who the best game testers are for that specific game. So it's actually been like two months since I've signed up to do this. And I've answered like eight questionnaires. And out of all of those, I've only been accepted to test one game, which paid me $9. So yeah, I think it's pretty fair to say that you're not gonna be making $36 an hour with this side hustle. It's probably more like $10 a month if you're lucky. So this side hustle is trash. So this person is claiming you can make $90 an hour by transcribing and captioning videos. So I signed up online, completed a whole grammar and transcribing test, which I even found the answers to online to make sure that I pass it. But yeah, I went through this entire process. It probably took like an hour and a half just to get hit with an email at the end of it that says that the application process takes eight to 14 weeks. Now that was like 12 weeks ago. I was gonna wait the full 14 weeks to see if I actually get approved. But I was going through my emails and it turns out that I actually tried to do this like a year and a half ago. My application got denied. And in that email, they said that only 12% of applicants get approved. And I'm looking for side hustles that anyone can try. So this side hustle. Trash, kid. The next side hustle that we're trying is selling digital products on Etsy. This girl's claiming that she sells digital planners for like $13 and then she shows that she's made 60K in revenue. I'm pretty skeptical about this one because this is all stuff that you can find online for free pretty easily. And if you search up digital planner on Etsy, you get over 300,000 results. But the top ones on here are definitely crushing it. Like this person's store has sold over 100,000 of these planners at a $16 price point. That's pretty insane. But obviously there's no way that I'm gonna be ranking for that keyword. So I've been trying to think of different niches that I can try that might be good to make digital products for. And the first one that comes to mind is Halloween invitations. Halloween is in like three weeks. And if you search it up on Etsy, there's only like 20,000 search results. And what I've realized that everybody else does is they literally just take free templates off of Canva, maybe change them a little bit, list it on Etsy, and then literally send anybody who purchases that listing off of Etsy back to Canva to edit the template. Like what? They're drop shipping PDFs pretty much. So I just copied what these people are doing. I took every Halloween invitation template that I could find on Canva. I put it into a mock-up to make the listing look more professional. And I set the price point for $1, way below what anyone else is charging on here. I also made a little sticker book from free icons that I took off the internet. And then I just put them together on Photoshop. My design skills are not great. So I just wanted to throw that up on there and let's see if anybody actually ends up buying something from these listings. So flash forward three weeks, it's the day after Halloween. So let's take a look at our Etsy analytics. So up until today, we've had 27 visitors to our store and zero purchases. I can't say I'm surprised. Most of the successful stores on here have been around for years. So we didn't make any money with this. So the side hustle doesn't pass but I don't wanna trash it just yet because I still think that there's a lot of potential on Etsy. And I think this could be a video that I might do in the future where I put more effort into building a store and actually try to build it out and see if we can get some success. And that's it for the five side hustles. None of them were that great. Some of them have potential and that I'd be interested in still trying. But yeah, if you have any side hustles that you would want me to try, leave them in the comments and I might just make a video out of it. Subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Are you playing with that girl?